Welcome to this podcast series about networking. My name is Bruce Hartpence, a faculty member at RIT, and I will be your host. To find out more, you can visit us at www.nssa.rit.edu. Thanks for listening. Chapter 1 in the Packet Guide to Core Network Protocols covers the idea of models. Now, it is possibly the most boring topic that we could talk about, but it provides the foundation for a lot of our discussions later on. Now, the dictionary defines a model as our structural design or a representation, and this is pretty accurate. So what a model becomes is the architecture over which a network is, is built. Now, it also gives us our list of protocols that we're going to use in the network, and this is often referred to as the protocol suite. So a network is made up of or uses a bunch of protocols to get things done. The protocols provide the rules for every communication. Models and architectures are a little abstract, so sometimes it's tough to wrap our heads around the ideas. So we often compare these ideas to the postal system. In a postal system, like a networking model, everyone is trying to accomplish the same thing get a message from one place to another. Every point of the system has its own set of rules that must be followed. You pick a language for your letter, you address the envelope in a certain way, they handle the letter in a certain fashion when it gets to the post office, and drivers or transportation have to follow the rules of the road. But the driver doesn't really care what language you use to write your letter, and you don't really care which way the driver goes. What we care about is that the system works, and the reason that it works is because everybody obeys their particular set of rules. A networking model behaves in much the same way, with all the devices and all the hosts sticking to a particular set of rules or protocols. Even when having a simple conversation with one of your friends, you make a lot of decisions regarding the transmission. For example, you decided on the language, your body posture, and things like whether or not you decided to talk to them in person or call them on the phone. A networking architecture is not much different, with the transmission proceeding through a series of devices along the way. Each device has its own set of decisions to make or jobs to do, but they might be different at the varying points in the network. Eventually, the transmission reaches the destination and then again, some more decisions have to be made. For example, is it going to be translated? And what form will the message take at the destination? Was it converted to speech from text or vice versa? All this talk about rules brings us to our networking models. Before we go on, let's get a couple of keywords and tricky phrases out of the way. Most models are layered in design which simply means that all these functions and rules operate at different parts of the network. And each device is responsible for the activities at a particular layer. Now the protocols are designed to handle a particular job. And then you stick the protocol in the layer. Now that also means that not all functions or jobs occur at every layer. So that makes it hierarchical. Now our lower layers are often associated with hardware. Now this means that things like NICs or network interface cards are the things that are part of the lower layer and those are the hardware uh, sorts of activities. Upper layers are usually associated with software. So when you're looking at the web or you're using email, that's an upper layer function. Since they can be such a pain, a fair question is why use a model at all? The reason that we spend so much time talking about models is because they can really help when you're trying to solve a particular problem. If you understand all the parts, the protocols, the rules, the architecture, then when you're trying to handle a particular task or solve a particular problem, do a little troubleshooting, most of the time you can come up with the answer. And this is because the model describes the entire architecture or the entire structure for a particular transmission. 
Historically, there have been a lot of different models. Systems Network Architecture from IBM, Novell Network, and Apple Talk. But most of these have not survived, or at least not survived in their original state. And this is because almost every model has adopted the TCP IP suite of protocols. And that's really the reason that today we use a single model, TCP IP. Now the topology shown here is an example of a mixed model environment. On the left we see an IBM mainframe. It and the associated dumb terminals are going to use the SNA suite of protocols. On the right we've got a couple of Windows machines, some of whom are using Novell Network Client or the IPX SPX series of protocols. Now because they're Windows they're also going to be supporting TCP IP. The two sides will not communicate. And for this reason, we had to have a special device called a gateway. And this is true anytime you're going to go in between models. Life is a little easier today because so many systems have adopted the TCP IP suite of protocols. So IBM AS400s and anything coming out of Apple these days all understand the same language and can talk very easily with other systems. If you open most network textbooks, or if you take a networking class, you're going to spend a lot of time talking about the open systems interconnection model. I don't like to talk about it too much because it's simply not in much use today. That brands me something of a heretic, but there you have it. It's what we call the reference model, and this is because no matter what model you were talking about, if you used the OSI model to relate the two things together, you ended up talking about the same sorts of functions and features. It's a seven layer model that describes a lot of detail, but the standards themselves, ISO IEC 7498 and ITU-TX.200, do not actually specify the protocols to be used in the standard or in the model. And here we have your seven layers of the OSI model. Starting at the bottom, you have the physical data link network and working all the way up to the application layer. Now this is actually pretty similar to most models. They all start with the physical layer and work their way up to application. Uh, and if this were a standard presentation, I would spend a lot of time talking about the details for each layer. But we're not going to do that here. We're actually going to reserve that for the TCP IP model, which we'll cover in a little bit. On the right side, you see the list of OSI protocols. If we take a look, we can see that most of them begin with the letter X, and that becomes significant to us a little later on in this presentation. So how do I get away with saying that we shouldn't spend as much time on the OSI model or the associated protocols? Well, if you take a look at the image on this slide, it is the Wireshark output from both an Apple and a Windows machine. If you'll notice, there aren't a whole lot of protocols that begin with the letter X. These protocols all come from the TCP IP suite. So, if you're going to learn about networking, you're much better off spending your time learning about the TCP IP protocols than anything else. And here we have the TCP IP model itself. As it says on the slide, it's the language of the internet. So it doesn't matter where you are, your home network, your work network, or cruising the web itself, you're going to be using protocols from this particular model. Now there are quite a few, we'll cover them later on, but this gets us started. Now the OSI model comes from a couple of standards organizations that were mentioned earlier. If you want to read about the TCP IP model, you're actually going to be looking at RFCs, or what we call requests for comments. Every one of the protocols that we're going to cover from here on out is associated with a particular RFC or a series of RFCs. The TCP IP model is similar in complexity to the OSI model, uh, and that's because we have to cover the same features and functions for every transmission. But as we can see, the TCP IP model reduces us to five layers instead of seven. 
Now in the picture I've listed a couple of protocols. Uh, starting at the bottom you see Ethernet and 802.11 and work your way up. And these represent the protocols that we use on almost every single network. It's also worth pointing out that a couple of the names of the different layers are different from the OSI model.